Hey guys, welcome to another Home Lab series video today. In today's video, I'm excited to show you guys the Proxmox Data Center. Um, it is an alpha that Proxmox released uh, about a week ago, right before Christmas. Um, and I've been itching to essentially play around with it, so I have. Um, but I'll show you how to install it and kind of what I found um, from it. So hopefully you guys will be excited to kind of see what it is. It's alpha, so it's definitely like very new, the stuff that will work and will, won't work. So just be aware of that if you decide you want to use it. But it's kind of like your vCenter where you have a more high level overview of all your data centers or, or clusters and nodes. Um, that makes it pretty easy to kind of just see in one interface. So let's get started. All right. So from here, I have essentially my Proxmox Cluster 1, Proxmox Cluster 2, and Proxmox Cluster 3. So 1 and 2 are actually clustered. Number 3 is just a single node. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is so that you can kind of see what will work between a cluster versus what will work um, across nodes that aren't clustered together with the data center. So what we'll do here is look up Proxmox uh, data center manager. Um, so they have a roadmap as well as like the support form. So we'll go to the support form, which we can find in their enterprise that they have the data center manager alpha. So what you can do is you can copy the link, um, go to your local, go to ISO images, and then download from URL, paste the URL, query it, and then hit download. So it's about a 1.13 gig download. I've already downloaded it, so we don't have to watch through it, but you can see it's right here already. Um, so what we're gonna do is uh, we'll create a new VM. So we'll name it Proxmox Data Center here and hit next. We'll just select your ISO that we just uploaded. We'll just keep the defaults in this case. Um, one core, two gigs of RAM, same networking and we'll start it after creating. Um, so if you're doing the ISO installation, it's pretty much the same as all the other Proxmox installations. It's pretty um, simple, honestly, at the end of the day. Um, and you'll just be able to just view it and do it. So in here we have, you know, your graphical user interface install, and we'll just essentially go through all the prompts, which Really, there isn't too many, and it will install pretty quick. Um, so the one thing that we'll need to know is I did set an IP address. So um, 172.16.1.7 will be the IP address for this. So we'll go back and go in here. So we'll accept the user agreement here. Uh, let me move this over here. We'll hit next on the hard drive. We're in the United States. Hit United States, America, Chicago. Next, we'll type in a password that we'll use. Um, and then we'll enter an email as well. Hit next. Then we'll do proxmoxdc.dragon.local. We'll do the 1.7 um, is what we had here. 1.7. And then our gateway is 1.1 .1 and DNS is 1.2. So then pretty much that's all you need. So you just need to set some time zones um, and then the host host name um, previous, yeah, dragon.local. Um, and then you hit install. So this might take a, a minute here or two, um, but once this is installed, then it will essentially prompt you for a web URL that you can go to. So once this is finished installing, um, we all resume the video. All right, so it finished installing, rebooted, and now you get essentially the uh, shell login, which is pretty much looks like all the other Proxmox installations that you've had. The one thing to note here is the port is on A443 as opposed to like Proxmox, which is on 8006. So what we'll do um, is actually go to uh, HTTPS, proxmoxdc.dragon.logo on 8443. Um, this is a self-signed cert, so that's why it's uh, connections uh, not private. So we'll hit proceed here. Assuming that it works. Okay. Um, so so I've actually set it up before, but it might... There we go. So, so you still have to enter the password. It was just glitching out caching probably the last time I uh, created this. So 
from here, you kind of get this interface. There isn't really too much to it until you start adding remotes. So remotes are like essentially your host. So in this case, we'll add a remote and we will do like HTTPS pxc1.dragon.local8006. And then you'll need to get the fingerprint of it if you're using, you know, just it's self-signed SERP, which you can do so by clicking on the host, hitting certificates, clicking on the ssl.pem, pve.ssl.pem, hitting view certificate, and then copy this fingerprint essentially. And then we'll copy and paste that. So then you can hit connect, just say connection okay. Then the remote ID is how it will show up in this dashboard. So we'll just name it PCX1, um, but this will also include PCX2 because it's in a cluster. So that's that's a unique thing to consider um, depending on how you want to name stuff. So this is just your root login as well. Um, Pam, and then you can scan and it will scan okay, hit next. Then it will kind of populate the endpoint. So in this case, um, this endpoint, it would work if you didn't have to do fully qualified domain names. So we're going to just remove that because we technically will be using it for fully qualified domain names and we'll add the 8006 for PXT, uh, PXC2 as well. Um, so you can see how it actually auto populated the fingerprint for PXC2 because it's in a cluster. So then we hit next and then finish. And this will add essentially both PXC1 and PXC2 because they're in a cluster. So you can see if you click on remotes, over here, you will see that we have um, this, but it will show both PXC1 and PXC2, um, which is pretty pretty good. Um, so the dashboards will eventually populate. I don't think these actually work. I, I haven't seen these work after I added stuff. So I think that's still like part of the alpha. Um, and then the rest of this doesn't seem like it has much else. So like clicking over here, that that's broken, um, but you know, They'll get to it. I'm not. I'm not worried. Um, oh, and then that doesn't work. Going hitting back button. Um, but you can see here that they have functions that you can use. So for like this test VM, you can click this and it will open a new window, which will go to that uh, prox box with that test VM. Um, and then there's powering it off and migrating. So like say for example, I wanted to migrate this from. Uh, target remote and you wanted to go to the PXC2, this should work because it's already clustered. So uh, because it's clustered, it should just do the same, go through the, within the cluster to migrate it. Now, the question here is if I were to add, say for example, the third house. So let's add one more house. Let's add PXC3, so HTTPS, pxc3.dragon.local on 8006. And then we would to get the certificate here. We will view the certificate, grab this fingerprint and paste it in. Hit next, pxc3 and add the realm, pam, scan, that's good. We'll delete the top one. We'll keep the bottom one. And then we'll hit finish here. It should now add um, essentially the third uh, machine here. Um, so I'm assuming how it kind of would work is essentially you would have your Proxmox clusters in a specific data center, and then this should be able to hit or be able to access any of those, right? Um, so you can see here, we don't have anything down here. Um, this one, you can see that we did migrate it over to PXC2 and test, got it over here. So the other thing is to test out is, hey, going from one data center to another, um, this is going to be the interesting part where it will be, can it migrate from my PXC1 or in this case, PXC2 um, that's in a cluster with PXC1 to PXC3 that's standalone. So we hit migrate here um, and I, I think I've gotten this to like pretty much fail every single time because of some, um, yeah, insecure dependency uplink um, while accessing the tunnel. So off off the bat, it doesn't work out correctly. 
um, if you're trying to go from one host to another. But if they are in a cluster, you can do the migration without any issues. So um, I'll probably need to take a l little bit more look at that um, and see if that was the intended usage. Um, but outside of that, this is pretty nice. Um, it's obviously still very alpha, but you kind of get a more high level overview, especially if you have multiple remotes, multiple nodes, um, and you don't want to, and you don't need to like literally look at like this view, right? Um, because I, I mean, this gives you a pretty good view, um, but it can get a little bit confusing with like the VMs, the networking, the, the storage and everything, um, where this is a little bit cleaner and you can kind of see, hey, you know, here's, here's everything in a little bit cleaner. Um, aspect. So I'm looking forward to um, the next few releases and seeing, you know, the things that they improve upon and, and make work. Um, and hopefully, you know, this kind of gets, um, you know, as much as you would get from like a vCenter um, type situation from VMware. So uh, I'm definitely looking forward to that progress. And yeah, so um, that's how you can get started with installing it and playing around with it, though, um, if you're interested in testing out the alpha. So if you enjoyed the video, please leave a like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.